Um, thanks so much, everybody, for your staying power to the very last uh, presentation of this session. Um, yeah, I'm Thea Lindquist, and this is Margaret, as you prepared. And yeah, I'm from the University of Colorado Boulder, and she's from the University of Helsinki, and we're here to tell you a little bit today about a project that we started working on last year. Um, the project that we're introducing today explores the publications and networks of the members of the Fruit Bearing Society as reflected in the VD-17, the Union Catalog of Books printed in German-speaking countries in the 17th century. We see this project as a use case for work with the VD-17 data. The team working on this project is from the University of Helsinki on the technical side and the University of Colorado Boulder on the content side, um, with input from society scholars in Germany and the staff of the Herzog August Bibliothek in Wolfenbüttel. In addition to the bibliographic data, we're drawing on biographical data from a membership database compiled by the recently concluded research and edition project focusing on the society, which I actually think was funded by the Saxon Academy of Sciences, so thank you. I know there were um, people connected with that here. Um, a little bit about the society. The Fruit Bearing Society had a significant influence on thought and culture in the empire. It was the first and largest cultural academy in early modern Central Europe. Oops. Okay. Um, the society had two main goals, um, cultivating virtue and ethical behavior, and developing and promoting German as a literary and scholarly language. So the member publications are interesting to us because print was the primary means by which members publicly disseminated their ideas and as a lens through which the society has not yet been systematically studied. So there's been no quantitative analysis of the members' publishing process and output. The available data offer an opportunity to approach a range of research questions. And in this first phase of the project, we've been working on these two, um, related to the volume and content of member publications over time, with reference to the society's three main periods, which you can see up here. So I'll show a few of the first graphs that we've generated to help answer our research questions. Um, this first one gives the annual number of printings in various subsets of the VD-17. Um, some observations that we've made um, include that the annual number of publications in all languages when controlled for variants, so this would be the green um, dots, range from around 1500 and 1640 to around 4000 and 1670. The publishing output remained high with some fluctuation until the end of the century. And um, it took until the late 1650s, so around 40 years, for publishing output to recover to pre-30 years war levels. So I think you can see that. And then it goes back up again. Um, publications in or including German language, those are the ones in yellow, um, followed the same general pattern but increased in proportion from roughly a third at the beginning of the century to one half towards the end of the century. Um, and you can see the different classes of member publications at the bottom. Um, so let's take a closer look at those publications to which the members substantially contributed and are related to the mission of the society. Um, and those are the red ones in this graph. It shows the proportional member publication output by period of the society. Some scholars have argued that the society became less focused on the linguistic and literary goal of its agenda in the later phases due to less central direction. So one way to gauge this is the mean number of publications members produced to see if it dropped off after the first phase. And if anything, the trend seems to be the opposite, so that's interesting to us, um, perhaps indicating that the activity of individual actors or society members was more impactful than the society's leadership, at least where publishing was concerned. 
And then this final graph shows publications in genre categories related to the society's purpose um, to get a sense of the overall trends related to content in the BD, BD17. Um, some things that we observe are that genres in the VD-17, like most historical bibliographic databases, are general enough that we could only see some very basic trends. Um, so looking at the overall publishing output, the occasional publications, which are the ones in pink, were sort of the breakout genre of the 17th century as time went on. Um, lyric poetry in green was the second most prominent. And German as a scientific language in blue um, was the third. And these three seemed to sort of jostle for prominence early on. Um, and in the 1630s, the trend sort of shook out for the rest of the century. Um, yeah, and this isn't shown here, but um, when we look just at the publications that members produced, um, they're sort of in line with these um, same top genre categories. And so I'll let Nargis um, talk a bit about the technical um, work that we did to produce these. Um, unfortunately, about our data, we have some issues. But fortunately, we applied some technical approaches to solve these issues. Um, in general, we want to get society members unique IDs, which is called GND and match uh, these uh, ideas uh, in VD17 because we, we are interested to get the records and publications related to society. And also, we use uh, VD17 uh, role metadata because we want to extract um, signif significant contributions, uh, specifically for society members. And also, we use VD17 genre metadata because we want to compare and the um, publications regarding their concepts uh, during the time. But we have some problems uh, regarding these approaches. For example, in our data set in the VD17, it uh, records every variant of a publication as a distinct publication, even if they are different in few characters. So the catalogers also consider them as non -ide uh, not identical. But um, there is a, um, uh, they, the catalogers usually use fingerprints, which is a uh, specific character in a specific pages of a publication. And also they use uh, metadata uh, for the publications to, because they want to distinguish between the, uh, that the publications are same or no, they are uh, completely distinct. And as you can see here, we uh, um, just use a sample of our data set. Uh, and um, as you can see, the combination of the um, uh, last two, the identical metadata and identical fingerprints and pages, reached to better F measure, and it's 83%. And um, the, another problem that, sorry, I'm going fast, and maybe after that we can, uh, in a QA. A session we can discuss about that, but uh, another problem that uh, we have is the, that GNDs, that is a unique ID for society members, usually is not uh, recorded for all the um, uh, record all the roles and relationships in our data set. So, and for the records that we don't have GND, we use the um, varying uh, name formats. As you can see in German, there are some rules and. Um, we use the uh, early high uh, German variation rules, and also we use the rules that uh, automatically mine from VD17 uh, authority data set, uh, which is one of our colleagues. He did uh, for his PhD for the German language. And um, in general, the, um, but as you can see, there are lots of varying of names and makes them and matching uh, the uh, names uh, a little hard for us. But we use the member names and we use the uh, member uh, names, uh, variation of their, uh, their names that is recorded in VD17 authority data set. And also we use the variation of their names that we could find uh, through their GND. But in general, the core society members, uh, which is very important for us, only 4% of them, they don't have GND and we understood 
with some uh, manually checking that most of them they, they are not they don't have any um, like very important role maybe their dedicates or their contribution is not very significant and um, also for some of the roles in our data set and um, we don't have uh, some records that we don't know their role but uh, another thing that also this is something because our work is in progress we understood that mostly, for example, in a case that 028C, which is, can be other authors or contributors, um, for example, if they are dedicated sensors and forward, their role is mentioned. But for the um, most important roles, we don't have unfortunately these roles, which can be uh, like other authors. And, um, and the uh, other uh, issues that we have is that around 15% of BT17 records, we don't have uh, genre information, usually it's pamphlet or broadsheet. Uh, but in the society, uh, in the member, um, in our society data set, only 885 of them, uh, they don't have a genre, which we can do it manually uh, and filter them. In general, um, um, until now, in our data set, we could uh, apply this method to identify the variants or, and non-normed actor links in the VD17. And also, we can apply this method in the other library catalogs. And in the future, in the, because this work is in um, uh, progress, we want to uh, work on the other aspects of society publications, like translations, presents, and publishers, and dedicates. And Yes, this is uh, the person so help us and thank you for your interest.